Hello, gentle people, and welcome to another Sparrow Art Vibes video tutorial. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I'm Hazel, a self-taught resin artist, and I enjoy sharing how I create the items that are available for sale in my growing, I say growing because it's, sales are picking up, in my growing Etsy shop and my Shopify stores. I do hope that uh, my new as well as returning subscribers and viewers pick up some useful tips that will help um, enhance your creativity. So uh, for today's video, I received um, two Shopify orders from the same customer. The first one is to create a sea turtle charcuterie board, similar to this one that's pictured online. However, the one pictured online, the turtle's shell is fuchsia, hot pink, and the customer wants their sea turtle to have a blue shell. Their second order is for a complimentary beverage coaster set. So rather than create a beach scene, as you see um, with the set that they purchased online, the customer asked that the coasters also have um, a blue sea turtle. So today I am excited to share how I created the matching sea turtle beverage coaster set. So we will begin by taking a look at the materials needed for this project. All right, let's take a look at the materials that we need to create our sea turtle beverage coasters. We need four of the um, coaster molds. We are going to be making a holder, and this is the holder mold as well. We, of course, need our resin. My go-to is the Craft Smart. Uh, this is the Part A resin. This is the Part B hardener. We will need the larger measuring cup and stir stick. We will need a small measuring cup and a stir stick. We need one cup for one color mica powder, and that is going to be the All Starry Aqua Blue Mica Powder. We are going to decorate the shell and give it some texture. Uh, I have not decided, so I'm going to put them both up here. This Craft Smart Extra Fine Glitter or this Recollections Tinsel Glitter. I like that this has texture. I like that the other has bling. So I'll put both of those there and I'll decide which one I'm going to use. I am going to embellish the rim with some um, assorted seashells. So we got some there. I'll set that well. Let's see, set it where it can be seen. And then I have these, I call them special seashells because they came in a little container there. Let me see. I like these because they, they're white and light. They're not dark. I like these. So we'll add a few of those. Oh, I totally forgot my gloves. Can't do resin without, um, can't do resin without your nitro gloves. And in order to get the artwork onto the coasters, we are going to be using the clear water slide decal paper. I have traded in tattoo paper and sticker paper for the water slide paper. I absolutely love that stuff. So that's it. Let's clear all of this off the table and we will get started. Okay, we are ready to get started working on our sea turtle beverage coasters. 
I always start by reminding crafters to follow the manufacturer's instructions. We are using the Craftsmark Clear Casting and Coating Resin. And it says that we need a mixing ratio of, is that clear? We need a mixing ratio of one to one. And we need to be mixing our resin for a minimum of five minutes. So that's what we're going to do. These coasters are actually being done in four steps. I think four. The first step is to uh, pour resin in the rim. These coasters, these beverage coasters I like because they have rims, um, which means that regardless to how much condensation uh, comes off of your container, be it a bottle or, or a glass or a mug or whatever, um, it's not going to run off the edge. So I always mark my containers. Uh, we need 40 milliliters, so I have a 20 and a 40 marked there. And so we are going to pour 20 milliliters of the Part B hardener. And 20 milliliters of the Part A resin. As I always say, you do not have to watch me mix or color resin, um, but we're going to follow the manufacturer's instructions and mix for five minutes. Okay, so the focus of the coasters is going to be the sea turtles. But when you turn these over and you put your glass on the coaster, you can't actually see the sea turtle. So I try to make sure that this rim also has a little bit of interest. So we're gonna pour a clear ring of resin around the rim and then we're gonna add some seashells to it so that when the glass, when the sea turtle is being hidden, you still have something interesting to look at. Okay, and so we are just going to Tiny teeth, ooh, pick some tiny seashells here that we're going to fit into the sides there. They have to be small enough and thin enough to fit into the sides. And you know, as, as you can vary the kind that's a good thing. Like I said, we're just trying to create some interest. That one's a little big. I don't know, I guess he'll fit. And some dark ones and some light ones. spirals guess I need some new shells right about now and again the point here is as I said when you are looking at the coast or once your glass is in it you can, won't be able to see the sea turtles so we need something to look at in the interim. I also 
also took the time, I have some blue abalone shells. And since the customer likes blue, I went and sorted through and handpicked some blue abalone shells to just drop in here. And then we'll just let this set for an hour or so and then we'll come in, we'll mix and we'll pour the blue resin that goes in here. So we'll just let this set for a little while and um, an hour and then we'll come back and we will mix the blue and pour the blue on here but this way um, the shells don't sink into the blue and disappear. This way you'll always be able to see the shells. So let's use the heat gun. Let's pop any air bubbles. And that's that. We'll be back in about an hour or so. Okay, we need uh, 160 milliliters, but again, these measuring cups don't go up to 160. I could do 101 and 60 in the, well, actually, you know what? I think I, I'll do that. I'll get rid of this one. I think I'll do it just like that. I'll do 101 and 60 in the other. Um, because this measuring cup uh, doesn't do increments smaller than that. So let's, I gotta clean these off. So that's the 60 one and, and that's the 100 one. Okay, so part B. Oops. Thirty. Okay, let me make sure you know what I'm doing. Part B. Thirty in this one, and fifty in this one. And then part A. Thirty in this one. one the inconvenience doing it this way is that you have to mix both each individually five five minutes you can't like I can't stir two at one time I don't think I've never thought about that I don't know why I'm doing this I don't know why I'm doing this this is so silly Pour this resin into this cup. That was foolish. When I happen to know that this cup will hold. This is what happens when you're not thinking. And I know full well that this cup holds, will hold 160 milliliters. I don't know what crossed my mind. All right, now let's just finish our five minutes of stirring. That was silly. So now we have our all starry aqua blue. OK, 
Okay, so now that our color, our blue is mixed, we're just going to pour our blue into these molds. And in case you are concerned or you notice that I am not filling these to the rim, it's because this particular mold is very deep. And if I fill it to the rim, then the coasters will not fit in the holder. get some heat on these. And lest we forget that we did have the mold for the holder, so now I'm going to mix resin to go in here. So that's another 50 of B and 50 of A. Again, our all starry aqua blue. And I generally add a little extra mica powder to the holder because I want the holder to be darker than the coasters. I don't want you to really be able to see the coasters through the sides of the holder. And so you're not confused. I had already poured the clear resin in the holder and added the seashells before I decided to use this particular um, order as my YouTube video. So you you skip seeing me pour the clear in here, but it really did, I did it. So so now we're just pouring. Perfect. Perfect. Boy, you don't get any closer than that. Perfect. And let's just stick a stick under that to make sure that stays level. Perfect. Okay, and now we need to use our heat gun to pop any air bubbles. Perfect. Well done. So we'll again leave this to cure overnight and then we'll come back tomorrow and we will print the um, sea turtles and apply those. Alrighty. Okay, I'm not going to go through the entire process here however i do want you to see where i get a lot of my artwork from 
I use a site called Creative Fabrica and let me zoom in here and they have thousands upon thousands of fonts that you can select graphics um, 3d images there's a spark creative thing they've got some stuff on crafting and needlework I've never even looked at I've never looked at the classes um, some premium tools but it's the POD the print on demand that I actually use because when you select print on demand then licensing of the artwork is not an issue at all when you choose artwork under print on demand you can use it and you don't have to worry about somebody saying you know it's an intellectual property issue so if you click on print POD then you have a search bar here and if I type in sea turtle so once I type in sea turtle this will give me just an almost endless uh, variety of sea turtles uh, we are talking the little cute one up there in the upper left hand um, just a just a wide range of um, artwork some of which are bundled uh, let me zoom into that one right there patriotic sea turtles so those are all red white and blue red white and blue turtles Ooh. I want you to see the range of artwork that you have to choose from uh, different colors uh, again some are cutesy some are serious some are realistic uh, there you have black and white so this is the range this is where uh, my turtle artwork came from from creative fabrica and so I chose a particular turtle and I'm not going to curse it through here to find it again different perspectives this is face you know face on um, so yeah this is where I get my artwork from and so I have chosen the artwork that I want and so I download this artwork and then I go into Canva so let's get out of this so I download my artwork and I go into Canva and I create a document this is the turtle that I'm going to be using this was the one that I actually wanted however uh, to make sure that this fits on the coaster I uh, put a let me see if I can separate these I put a circle on here that's 3.5 inches in diameter that's the inside of the coaster and so my turtle needs to fit inside that 3.5 so there he fits this one was the one I liked the most but when I put him inside the circle he didn't completely fit if I put his face move my circle I don't know can you see me moving my circle let me zoom in just a little bit not that you need to know all these details but it does help if you're doing any kind of design when I put him inside that circle I wound up with this white space because this this turtle came with the background and so I wound up with this white space in order to get his head and his flippers in here if I move him move my circle in then I lose part of his head and I lose some of his flippers so my other option was to use canva has a edit feature let me click on this it has an edit image feature oops, oops, oops. let me see if I can show you that's the turtle that I originally wanted if you have a free canva account you cannot do this but if you pay for canva they have in their software something called background remover so it says B let me move this over here 
Okay, so if I use the background remover tool, watch what happens here. You see all this beautiful pink and purple, but it's going to turn out looking like this one. Watch, just by clicking this button. Oops, there you go. Background's gone. Now the problem with me removing the background is it also took out part of the flipper here and part of what was back here. So let me command Z. So yeah, so you can compare these two. Let me. So again, you see the part of his flipper is missing here and his whole flipper back here, this whole piece right here came out with the background. So I decided not to use that one and instead um, I'm using the one that you see me using. So we chose this turtle and then once we decided yes that's the turtle that I'm using then I just created a new page and I put him on here four times and so we will then print him out on water slide paper. Let me put that paper in my printer right now. And again, we are using the clear water slide decal paper. Uh, make sure you get the one for inkjet printers. Okay, so what we need to do is download our artwork. This is page, oops, oops, oops. This is page two, so we are going to download this. We are going to click download. We are going to select page two. Now it's important that you then go up and click this box transparent background. That's important because then this won't be white. This will be clear. Then we hit download. Okay, so our artwork is downloaded. Again, we've already, it's, it's in the size that we need. And when it's time to print, uh, again, you want to go into media and then you want to go to paper type and you want to make sure you select glossy paper. And notice that that moved that dial over to the best uh, and then hit print. Okay. So there is our design. The water decal directions tell you that uh, you are to print your design again on the glossy photo paper setting. But once it's printed and dry, then you need to go into a well ventilated space and then spray it, uh, they recommend three times, with a coat of clear acrylic spray. So we're going to take our design out back on my patio and we're going to spray it. I'm out on my patio and I am using the Rust-Oleum 2X Ultra Cover Gloss Clear. And again, it says it seals, protects, and revitalizes. So I am going to spray the first coat. And then I'll come back out here and I'll spray two more coats and then we'll take the artwork in and add it to our coasters. Hello again, gentle people. It is the next day. Uh, we are going to uncover these coasters. And this has always, <clears throat> this has always been my favorite part of working with resin, and that's the unmolding. Uh, because what you see on this side is totally different from what's on the front side. So we're going to just run our 
fingers around here to release the suction. And there we go. So again, you can see the shells around the edge. And as I said, uh, this doesn't really matter because we're going to put the decal on here. But what I said was when you put your glass, let's say you put your cup here, you can't actually see the decal. So you do want something of interest going on around the edge. So that's our first one. I sand the edges of all of the coasters anyway, but I want you to see that that one shell, oops, that one shell right there is sticking up. So when we sand, we have to make sure we sand, and that's one of those pretty ones, one of those pretty white ones, one of those pretty white spirals. But it's sticking, I don't know if you can, if I have that angled right. You can see that, so we're gonna have to make sure we sand that piece down. And, oops, that brings us to our holder. And let's see what we've got going on here. This is making noise coming out. shells around the top so we then can go and those are actually I mentioned that I didn't fill the um, I didn't fill the molds uh, because if you put the feet on here these are going to be really high and I actually filled them more than I needed to so there are our four coasters. There is our coaster holder. That's really nice. And so now we go to the computer and we print out the sea turtles that go on here. So let's move from my studio to my office. Okay, I always say okay. So we have printed our sea turtles and so now I am going to cut them out and then we will attach them to our coasters. So let me just do this like this. So I am going to cut inside that black circle. Alrighty. And once this is cut, we're going to just set it in this bowl of water. Let me move these over. So this one should be ready now. So let's take this out, 
Yep. And it should just slide right off of there. And then just go and push it into position. Okay, let's get these other ones in here. Once this is on here, just carefully take your fingers and position this. Try and push as much of the water out of it as possible. Get rid of any wrinkles. Now again, let me point out something else uh, before I go any further. I told you make sure that when you print you click on the button that says transparent background when you're looking at that the background is white that's the paper but when you actually take the paper off you will see that that white is not on here so the reason for print for selecting transparent background is so this comes out with a clear background no white Again, we're going to just gently see how the edge of that is already off so we're going to just lay that in there and just gently slide hold that in place slide that paper from under there and then we'll go back get rid of any wrinkles. That looks like a nice slide right there. Okay, and so now, let me get rid of these, move that out the way, and so now we want to get rid of any wrinkles, and depending on the, the nature of the artwork, um, in some instances, a wrinkle or two is okay because it provides some texture. Just smooth that out. Oop, I got a corner that's up right there. I have a corner. I have an edge that creased. This weeding tool is pretty cool. Okay, so you want to put that where you need that to go. And then you're going to take a paper towel and you're going to blot. See how that paper towel is getting wet? You're going to blot the excess moisture. Blot the excess water. careful when you start doing that because it will make your artwork shift a little bit. Oops, I just put a wrinkle right there. I just put a wrinkle in that. Let's see. I just put a wrinkle.
All right, and let's do this one. And again, we're blotting the water. It's wet. This is so smooth. This is this is so nice. And then I have an air bubble right in the middle. Let's see if we can work that. That's funny. This one, this was almost perfect. So we're going to leave these to dry and then we'll come back and I'll take, um, I had said I had, that's actually a green glitter versus blue. That's blue and I was trying to decide whether I wanted to use the extra fine glitter or the tinsel. Um, but we'll come back after these dry and we'll add some glitter to them to give them a little bit of bling. But there you have it, your turtles are stop mid-sentence when I see something. Isn't that horrible? That's not good for video. So, oops. So there you have it. Um, these will dry and we'll come back and we'll put some glitter on them and give them a little bit of bling. Right, the artwork has dried on um, our coasters. Now when I did the materials, I said I was going to choose between using this um, teal extra fine glitter and using this tinsel glitter. Um, I'm not going to use either one, so I'm gonna put these aside. So what happened was when I worked on the charcuterie board, instead of doing the turtle shell in um, glitter, like I planned on doing, I uh, remembered that I had some colorful abalone shells. And so I did the turtle shell in shell. And when I sat down uh, to get ready to put the glitter on these, I remembered, and I'll show you, that I had this um, package of little teeny, teeny tiny shells. This is um, jewelry shop shells. These are tiny. These are little bitty pieces. This is really for like nail art and whatnot. And so I decided instead of using either this glitter or the tinsel glitter that I am going to put uh, these shells, th these little teeny, these little teeny shells on here. I have this B7000, which came in a rhinestone kit that I have. I did a set of dominoes that were personalized with the term or name Sexy Zeta. And instead of painting the pips on the dominoes, I did them in rhinestone, so I had this left over. So I am going to use this and just put a couple of pieces of this on each of these. It doesn't have to be a lot. Uh, just a couple of pieces, and these are not blue. There is no blue 
there is no blue in here there's not a blue um, so I have these colors so we're going to use these and I am not going to put a whole lot on here just need a couple to, to make it look a little livelier and so we are going to just open this and I am going to put a drop there, drop, ooh, drop, oh this is stringy. Oh I don't like the strings, oh, that's okay. Then we're going to take our tweezers. I put the little tray over here because that's how you do it with the rhinestones. Um, ooh, oh, there dropped one. Uh, this was my idea. This might not be a good idea because I can't pick these up. Where'd it go? I dropped it. I need one of those um, rhinestone picker-upper thingies. You know what, where is my, um, okay, nothing like um, trying to do something new and not have the right materials ah. to do it with. you call this? I think I'm missing a couple of dots here.
Okay, well, I think um, this one didn't have as many as those three, so let me go back and add some more to this one. This is kind of skimpy. sufficient. Let me just take a toothpick and just press those down. They should all... This dries really quickly. enough okay so there you go your sea turtle actually has shells on his back instead of glitter so that's good all right so I'll wait about an hour and then I will come back and um, do a clear coat back and it's been a, well over an hour because I wound up watching General Hospital. Um, if you are a General Hospital viewer then you know the little silly storyline now is Ned Quartermain uh, doesn't just have amnesia but he now thinks he is a former personality he had uh, when he was trying to get into music himself as a rock star Eddie Main. Um, I knew with Nina, I knew with him knowing Nina's secret that she turned Carly and Drew into the FCC that the writers were probably going to kill him off. Um, but when he fell and they got him to the hospital and said he's going to live, then I says, no, he'll have amnesia and remember none of it. But they put a little twist on it and they had him come back as Eddie Main. So anyway... Um, our next to the last step is to do a clear coat. Uh, we put the shells on these and so now we need to mix our resin. So I, we need 40 milliliters. So I've marked in purple the 20 and the 40. So we need 20 milliliters of the Part B hardener. Okay, so we need 20, I can't see, 20 milliliters of the Part B hardener, 20 milliliters of the Part A resin, We are using Craft Smart, so we know we need five minutes to stir, so you can just fast forward through this. Okay, resin is mixed, so now all we're going to do just blowing any dust if you hear me that's what I'm doing blowing any dust or lint off of these so now we're simply going to do a clear coat 
just pouring resin right in the center of each of these. And this should be deep enough um, to cover the shells. I don't think covering the shells completely will be an issue. Okay, and then I always simply take my coasters and I tilt them. And then just push that back to let that roll back to the center. center right into the center I think we missed a spot <clears throat> over on that side yep got it back to the center and everybody who's ever watched my videos knows that I do need to put a little stick under these to keep them level And that's it. So now we just need heat gun to pop the air bubbles. Okay, those are done. We are going to cover these, let them cure overnight. Well, probably not overnight, probably this evening I'll come back in here. Um, I'll probably come back later on this evening. I am back so that we can finish this set of coasters. Let's take the cover off. So we only have two things to do. One is just sand uh, the rim here uh, to make sure there are no sharp edges and then add our rubber bumps. So let me grab my mask, my Dremel, and my vacuum. love my little Swiffer cloths to get the dust off of these. This, this, these are just, these are wonderful. Okay. And then we have our 3M rubber bumps to go on these. Four of the large ones go on the bottom of the holder. I see a lot of people on Etsy advertise um, that they put cork on the bottom of their coasters and the problem with cork is that it will dry out and once it dries out it becomes brittle and once it becomes brittle it starts to crumble and you wind up with like dirt and dust all over your furniture, your tabletops. The other thing with um, the other thing with the cork is that if it gets wet it's mucky. Once it gets wet it's almost useless. Um, it will mildew, mold, get mold on it and if you put something sweet on it again you just can't get um, you can't get cork wet. You can't get cork wet. Now again if you think of cork in wine bottles that uh, cork stays wet 
but it's not exposed to air. That's the difference. That's not exposed to air. So we're just getting these. Gotta use them all. Two more on here. And I happen to like these that are clear because if you are using light colors like I'm using now, or you 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 have something that's see-through, uh, you won't be able to notice. You won't notice these. And when I am placing these bumps on the back of the coasters, I am not putting the bumps on the edge. I'm putting them inside because when you stack these, they need to be able to fit. So if these were right on the edge, then it would be like that. They would not fit. So when you are putting um, your rubber bumps on, make sure you're putting them inside, away from the, about, that's a quarter, of, I guess that's a quarter of an inch. The rubber bumps protect your furniture from being scratched, but because these are rubber, they are also non-skid. So when you set them down, you don't have to worry about the coaster moving. Slide in across the table. I stuck my finger in that, um, but it's below the surface. I'll decide if I'm going to that out. All right, so believe it or not, there's one more thing we need to do. And I need to get a cup. When you sand these, it leaves, oops, what am I doing? It leaves that edge white. See there? That edge, if you, when you sand these, it leaves a white edge. Um, let's see. Yep, you can see it there. So what we do to get rid of that white edge is seal it in varnish. So we have the Deco Art Dura Clear Gloss Varnish. I just love this stuff. And we're going to put a couple of drops in this little mixing bowl. And then we are simply going to we are simply going to take and just go right around this edge and it won't be white anymore. Like I said, it's not just doing or creating the product or the item, it's also how you finish your work. And a lot of people won't take the time to go back and do this. And so, my goal is to produce a quality product that people be excited about it. We, and then they can talk about it. Okay, so these are finished. Finished, finished, finished. Real deal finished. Nothing else to do but take some photographs. These are done.